Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hello everybody, this is a video request and as always you can go to assholeconsulting.com, send your request there and it doesn't have to be video, it can be private, it can be uh, email and um, I do do Skype and phone but it costs you an arm and a leg so you probably won't want to do that. Anyway, uh, Alex, Alex writes, uh, to Aaron, after watching a few YouTube videos about currency, I want someone educated in finance or economics to give me their view on this topic. I've heard many people, usually conservatives and libertarians, say they would like to return to a commodity-backed security, such as having a gold standard. Others, such as liberals, are fine with having the current system using fiat currency as a means to trade with people. I would like to know what your opinion is of going back to having a gold standard to having some type of currency system other than the one we currently have. All right, well, let's explain <coughs> why... Um, the typically writer leaning, although not always, but in general is the conservatives and the libertarians that would like to go back to some kind of commodity or gold based standard. <clears throat> Why those on the left typically, though not always, would prefer more of a fiat currency. Uh, the reason, the, the primary reason those on the right would like to go back to a commodity based uh, currency is because it would limit inflation. All right. The, the pro primary problem with fiat currency, and uh, Jerry Robinson has a great book out called The Bankruptcy of Our Nation. It's a wonderful book. You should all read it. Certainly doesn't talk over anyone's heads. Very digestible for the average person. And he has a great point. All fiat currencies, all, all, 100% of them in the world to today have failed. All fiat currencies have been overprinted and hyperinflated away. <clears throat> Even the ones we have today will be hyperinflated away, and technically, most of them already have been. Now, this is why back in 1910, you could buy a, a brand new Ford model with this quarter and still have change left over. <laughs> uh, so, that is the primary concern that conservatives and libertarians have: is we want a stable currency where there's no inflation, so we don't lose the value of our money when it's sitting there in the bank or in investments or what have you, so that the economy can function. Because if you have hyperinflation, as you all know, look at the Weimar Republic. The, the economy shuts down because people are too busy uh, exchanging the work progressively worthless paper notes in for something that's tangible and barterable, um, <clears throat> which, which then really throws your economy down into recession because nobody's working. People are just merely trying to get out of currency, trying to get, I mean, God, what was it? They were you, you'd get every two hours, you would get paid so you could go take your money and buy shit with it. I mean, oh my God, it was horrible. So uh, inflation is very damaging uh, to the economy. That's, that's the primary reason to do it because it forces the government not to print. You could, a central bank just can't come in and print off more yen or print off more dollars. <clears throat> no, it has to be tied to something limited and tangible. And you see this as well as in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is only going to have 22 million Bitcoins. That's it forever, uh, which kind of in a philosophical sense or theoretical sense, makes it the optimal uh, um, commodity currency because we can always drill and, and mine for more silver and more gold. But since gold and silver are so rare, historically speaking, they've served as a very limiting cap uh, to currency. So <clears throat> that is the primary. And then Democrats and leftists are against it, but I don't. I hate to say it, I'm being honest, I don't think Democrats or leftists understand why they're for it. They just like spending more money. And if you can't tax people, they always want the option to print off more money so they can buy shit of other people's crap that they, they need because they don't want to work. That's, that's the primary reason the Democrats, Democrats in power don't want to give that up either because they want to be able to bribe the idiot masses with, with money for their votes. So, and, and again, pretty much all politicians, but Democrat politicians in particular, really don't give a flying fuck about the future of the country. They, they, want, their, they want to get voted into office. They want to live an easy life. They want to avoid a real job. And so they'll do whatever they can. They don't care. They're dead. Fuck it. They don't care. Uh, they just want theirs and they want to have it now and they will sell the country down the river. So that's why we have so much debt that we have today. <clears throat> so that is the general argument uh, for why you have a commodity-backed uh, currency is because the commodity limits the amount of money that can be printed and therefore limits inflation. Now, uh, am I for such a thing? Yes, I am. I am for going back to a gold standard or a silver standard. It could be multiple precious metals. We could have palladium, we could have platinum, we could have gold. 
uh, it, it does it doesn't have to just be gold uh, but the reason I want to go back to it is again for the arguments that it would limit inflation it would it, it, it's it's no different than the balance of powers it really almost should be a constitutional amendment because it would moot the power of the government to not fuck with the currency uh, now there are arguments that are against it saying it's not feasible or technical because it's like well what what are we gonna do because you know, let me show you well I won't show you because my credit card now, I was gonna flash my credit card I'm like hey people would have a credit card number you take a look at your credit card that's not gold that's all electronic and having paper currency and electronic currency PayPal that's very convenient. That helps the economy move a lot faster. And, and you know, I know a lot of you, imagine if, you know, there's that baby boomer woman breaking out her checkbook to write a fucking check for her, for her Madame Yusel and holding up the whole fucking line. And that's what would happen. The economy would come to a screeching halt if we had to bring in gold coins, only cash. We couldn't use the bachelor lanes. We couldn't just like, bloop, bloop. Bloop, slide, fuck you, I'm a bachelor, give me my receipt, done. That's how I go shopping. I sing my, fuck you, I'm a bachelor, give me my receipt, done. I always do that. And then all the other people are like, I wish I was a bachelor who could get out of the checkout lane in under five minutes. But I'm a baby boomer woman who has to write my checks. I don't trust those electronic doodattery things. Where's my social security? Anyway. Uh, so, it would... It would still be a commodity back uh, currency. I don't think any conservative or libertarian is arguing we can't go back to carrying coinage with us. Uh, although we certainly would have that. What it would be is a commodity backed security. So this is what we had pre-1971 where if you looked at the Federal Reserve bills, even today, if you look at it, it doesn't say Federal Reserve dollars. It says Federal Reserve note. And, and that's a holdover. And what that meant is in the old days, you could take that to the Federal Reserve uh, government or a bank and exchange that dollar or that $10 bill for the equivalent amount in silver or gold at that time. And that's why it's called the Reserve, Federal Reserve, because we put our reserve golds and, and precious metals in the Federal Reserve. This is Die Hard 2. We're going to get the gold out of the Federal Reserve. Has 18 times the amount of Fort Knox. Ah, you kids, you. You don't remember the late 80s or the early 90s. It was a fun time with Bruce Willis, Willis kicking ass, being John McClain, my hero, John McClain. <clears throat> anyway, so um, the what we would have instead is uh, we'd still have paper notes, but you would, those notes would be backed up. The reason they have value is because every note would be backed up by a certain amount of silver or gold sitting at a Federal Reserve vault. And that, that way, and we could also digitize it. Say, I'm going to give you... $80 over PayPal. Well, that $80, you should be able to go to a bank or the Federal Reserve, trade in that $80 on PayPal or write a check, use a credit card. What You should be able to get that money, that physical coinage of silver and gold. So in other words, the commodity itself, the silver and gold, do not technically act as an actual transferable tradable currency. They are linked they are the, the primary function and purpose that they serve is to give those notes value in society, whether they be physical paper currency cash notes or they be digital records on the internet at the bank and, and your PayPal account. <clears throat> now a lot so that so you'll you'll run into the immediate argument. What are we supposed to do? Go back to the caveman days? Am I supposed to carry gold? <laughs> with this fucking I have a master's degree in sociology. They he's fucking in it. When you're done dealing with that sophomoric argument, yeah, you're not gonna. Ha you you would we would not be trading in the electronic, find a very intricate and very efficient electronic financial system that we have. <clears throat> we would basically be requiring that there be gold and silver stored out there. So uh, that's doable. It would certainly end inflation right away, uh, unless we started to fuck with the the money supply. Um, but the the other thing that would have to be done <clears throat> is we have to make sure. That there was an adequate amount of gold and silver in the vaults of the Federal Reserve. And that is why we need to audit it. Remember when the Germans wanted to know, say, hey, we want, we want our gold back. And the Federal Reserve says, oh, no, it's here, but you can't see it. That's a big red flag. That makes me wonder, like, do they really have it? And um, there's other concerns like the COMEX. There's all these contracts written out on precious metals. But what was it? Andy, uh, Andy Hoffman. Go to milesfranklin.com. Look him up. Um, he's, he's where I, I don't quote me on the percentage. He's worried that there's only like 10% of the gold that's supposed to be there to back up all these contracts. 
And this is where it's like, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Well, we'd have to audit the Fed every quarter or whatever institute we decide to hold our reserve currencies and make sure that for every fucking dollar bill, there was the whatever predetermined equivalent amount of silver or gold sitting right there in those vaults. Uh, now, that may be a pain in the ass, that may be inconvenient, I know a lot of leftists and tyrants would be very pissed off and upset about it, but it would end inflation or put a very severe cap on it as well. And so not only am I for that on a philosophical or a theoretical level, I'm also for that in a practical level. It is practical, it can be done. It won't be done because we have too many stupid people right now who don't watch videos like this, they don't care about reserve currencies, they don't care about gold or silver. They're just like, dang, dang, diggly, diggly, I got myself a greenback, woo -wee. I'm going to buy myself some whiskey, being completely unaware that whiskey actually is a quite a good currency and that is a pretty fair trade. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it, it's not going to happen. Uh, the powers that be, and, and here's the irony, the powers that be aren't the powers that be. The powers that be got elected because of the idiots who are the true powers that be. So this is idiocracy. It, it's a nice, fanciful discussion about it. Again, I strongly recommend Bankruptcy of Our Nation by Jerry Robinson. Great book. It, it explains everything you want to know about currency, central banking, reserve, you know, fractional, all this other stuff. Very wonderful book. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's why I think about currency. That's where, quote, we should have a currency, but we're not going to because the battle for economics, the battle for freedom, and the battle for politics and government and, and, and society is not in politics and economics and, and, and the news. It is at the psychology level, it's the psychological level of people's stupidity. So anyway, best of luck to all of you. Toodles.